I do what I do because I love smartphones. It is so incredibly cool to have all the knowledge the world has ever accumulated in something so small that could fit in the palm of your hand. And oftentimes as reviewers, we tend to nitpick devices. And I've reviewed thousands of phones, I believe at this point, but I have never had a phone that's been absolutely perfect. Something's always been wrong or something I personally would have always liked to change. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to see what would my dream phone look like. Not only what would the specs be, what would the software be, but also physically what would this phone look like. So I had a chance to team up with, I think, one of the best graphic designers in the industry. He does a lot of renders for our site. We'll link to him right here at C Concept Creators from Twitter. Definitely check him out, it's some amazing work to actually bring my dream phone to life. And as I go through the spec sheet, you'll start to see the phone take shape. And again, this is my dream phone, so I gotta pick anything I wanted from software and hardware to make a device. It's a Franken device that I know probably will never exist, but damn, it would be awesome if it would. So this is my dream phone. Screen is a huge deal for me. It's the way you interact with your phone. It's your portal to that world. So you gotta have the best screen in the business. And I'm starting with the screen from the Galaxy S9. The 5.8 inch OLED panel looks absolutely incredible. It's the best in the industry. And that is where I wanted to start with my dream phone. So beautiful screen is one thing, but making sure your phone is going to be safe is another. Face ID from Apple will be here, and I've been actually pleasantly surprised with how well it's worked on the iPhone 10. Maybe not even think about a lock screen anymore. I like that ease of use and that don't even worry about it type approach. Because I like redundancy, but sometimes Face ID doesn't work, I do like to have an in-screen fingerprint reader. It's my dream phone, don't forget, so I can add what I want. Camera also is a huge deal. You wanna make sure your camera is gonna be the best in the business. So that's where I started. We're gonna have the camera from the Pixel 2 with the variable aperture and second zoom camera from the S9 Plus. So I, I Frankenstein'd up those two camera sensors. Also, I think speakers kinda suck in general, especially when they're not facing right at you. So of course, dual stereo front facing speakers when you're holding the phone. And in case you wanna plug in a pair of headphones, of course the headphone jack will be there. We're gonna take the DAC from the best, and that will be from LG. Other sort of smartphone stuff you'd expect, of course, will be here. Expendable storage, IP68, wireless charging, fast charging. And I'm shocked how often people ask if phones I'm reviewing have an IR blaster. So for you, IR blaster's in here. And also I'm gonna bring back something that phones have lost the past few years, movable battery. So, you know, why not? If your battery dies, just carry an extra one. That's gonna be here as well. And making sure this phone can stay juiced should be no surprise. If you want a fast charge, uh, you can do it via USB-C. My favorite feature, aside from Face ID on any Apple product, has been that profile switcher on the left-hand side. What turns it from ring to vibrate, it's really handy. We don't see it on any other phone, save for OnePlus. So that will definitely be here. Uh, and because it's my dream phone, I'm going unnecessarily heavy on the RAM. Eight gigabytes of RAM will be on board, and to make sure that eight gigabytes hums smoothly, I'm gonna use the best processor on the market. We're gonna take the A11 Bionic chip that Apple's got in the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 8s. Here's where things get even a little crazier. How about some stock Android P? So if you're keeping track at home, Apple's processor, Google's OS. But I'm not done cherry picking from, from either. I'm gonna cross my fingers and pray to the smartphone gods that iMessage for Android is going to be existing. And because it's my dream phone, I'm going to will it into existence. So because I've got Face ID, you gotta have a place to put it. So the notch is there, but it can be used like a second screen if you want. And also you can turn it off via software. That was sort of the compromise. We went for a smaller notch than what we have currently uh, on the iPhone 10, hoping technology will advance by the time this dream phone could see conceivably come out. So smaller notch, but it is, it is there. I really wanted to make the back of this phone glass, but because it's removable, if you look sort of below the metal, that's where that panel slides off to have your removable battery. It couldn't really be glass. So it's a soft touch plastic, but I'm telling you from somebody who's never touched it, but who's imagined it, it's gonna feel really premium. Obviously price would be a big deal here. I don't know, it's my dream phone. Let's say it comes in at a thousand bucks. That seems to be the high end of what people will tolerate. It's a thousand dollars. That is 
my dream phone. That's what I'd want. The best from iOS, the best from Android, the best screens, the best speakers crammed in. It's what I think is a beautiful looking package. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. We have a new video coming up. You guys have been asking for it. We show you where to get the best wallpapers for your phones. This is probably the question I get more than any other. If you've seen our videos, you know we use some awesome wallpapers. We're finally ready to share where they are coming from. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. And if you guys like our new set, we're trying something new, give the video a thumbs up. We listened and try to brighten things up. Until next time, I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo.